Hey guys, this is Commander Matthew, and before we start this episode of Trek Back Tuesday, I want to tell you about my Star Trek podcast. Trek Untold is a weekly interview series where we chat with character actors, stunt performers, writers, directors, and behind the scenes people who make the Star Trek universe go at warp speed. Our show is about putting the spotlight on folks who aren't normally in the spotlight. It's about the people who have contributed to Star Trek but aren't in the opening credits of the show. You might not know their names or recognize their faces at first, but I guarantee after you hear our discussions with them, you're going to never forget them again. If you're a fan of not only Star Trek history, but also cinema and television, as well as the entertainment industry and all sorts of other things, you're going to really enjoy hearing this podcast. We're not just discussing appearances on TV shows with these actors, we're discussing acting theory, or we're talking to prop makers and behind-the-scenes crew and discussing how things work that we don't ever see on camera. Each episode is a deep dive into the profession of what these folks do, and you're going to really enjoy hearing their stories. You can check it out on whatever Apple device you're using, whether it's a phone or a pad, or you can listen to it on your favorite Android device. If you want to learn more about Trek Untold, make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And it's available on most major podcast platforms, including iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and many more. Check us out this coming Thursday for our latest episode, and until then, fortune favors the bold. Hi, I'm Captain Andrea. I'm Commander Matthew. And welcome to Trek Back Tuesday. This is the show that explores time and space to seek out new and old Star Trek merchandise from across the galaxy. Today, we're continuing our look at the Playmates Voyager line. Commander Matthew, beam in who we're going to look at next. Aye, aye, Captain. Crewman on the bridge, Captain. Ah. Uh, ah. <sighs> Uh, uh, I wish I knew what to say about this. Um, but we're looking at Ensign Harry Kim. Now, to be fair, at this point, this is based on Season 1 of Voyager. So, yeah, he is an Ensign. If this is based on Season 7... He's still an Ensign. He'd still be an Ensign, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's why it's really hard to talk about him sometimes. It's just like, oh, he, he, he deserved a promotion. But we're here to talk about his figure, so here you go. Here's good old Harry Kim. The packaging is the same as every other Star Trek Voyager figure out there. Classic style packaging, nice view of the Voyager ship, but you've seen it before. You also get a look at that trading card he comes with and a little peek at some of his accessories. On the back, you have who's in the wave, you have his accessories, and you have his bio, which for the most part isn't the most exciting, but it does mention one very important defining feature of Harry, even though it's really not. It mentions that he is a doting son who called his parents all the time. Well, I don't think Kim will be calling his parents anytime soon from the Delta Quadrant. At least not until season six or seven? Yeah, that's a heck of a collect call to make. Yeah. I wonder what the bill was like. Yikes. But on the upside, I'll say that Harry Kim is in good company because I think the only other toy to mention parents would be Worf. No, Tom Paris. Harry is one of the few Starfleet officers uh, who have bios that talk about parents. Um, there aren't many you know, parents don't seem to really be a thing, but Worf, uh, Troy, Tom Paris, and Kim. You know, they're part of the small club that involve parents. Might be fillers, but really not many. So no. that's interesting. Parents in space. What parents in space? Exactly. Unless you count Cisco. Commander Matthew, I think Harry Kim needs some freedom. Beam him out, please. Yeah, might as well. Why not? He's here. Here we go. <laughs> Poor Harry. Ensign Kim is on the deck, Captain. Thank you, Commander Matthew. So, Ensign Kim. So, Ensign Kim, you got any hot dates? Oh, right, you don't. Well, hey, hey, hey. At one point in time, especially back then, he was all about the Delaney twins. He was. He sure was. Uh, you know what? He did get some loving during the... He did, from a bunch of aliens who wanted to suck his essence out of him. True, and they he did escaped want to turn the... him into their species. Oh, okay, you know what? Forget it. Poor Ensign Kim. He escaped the one group of women who wanted to have their way with him, and he was like, no, 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 no. Hey, he understood consent was key. I don't think consent was the issue. Is that they're going to eat his face. Well, he didn't consent to eat his face. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> so number one question about our Ensign Kim figure, does it look like Garrett Wang? No. Yeah, no, that's a flat no. out no. Uh, I hate to say it, but uh, no, not at all. There's absolutely nothing that looks like no. Garrett Wang. And, and you know, yeah. case in point, point of reference I yeah. mean, he's Asian. Yes. They got that right. Well, no, I think that is something that we need to touch upon. That is a big win. They did make him look Asian. However, they did not make him look like Garrett Wang. No. Because not all Asians look alike. 
Yeah, lightness, they kind of blew this one. Even the hair, I don't think they even got right. Um, the hair... Like, from the front, uh, a little bit, but then when you look at the sides and everything else, it's like he's... It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't have his it, hair. Like, from no angle, does this look like Garrett Wang? Not at all. Um, Garrett's face, he's a little bit more square up top, especially, so... Yeah, that's not the figure. <laughs> no. So unfortunately, you're right off the bat, not off to a good start with Anson no. Kim. I, I appreciate the fact that they made him look Asian. That is a really important thing because there are plenty of Asian characters made by, you know, American companies. Even if they outsource, that still cannot get that right. So you know what? Kudos for making an Asian character. And I do want to mention on the back of his card as well, just to show you guys what that looks like. We get to hear what his interest is, which is clarinet. Hey, what do you got against the clarinet? That's apparently all he's interested in. No, clarinet. No, no, no. Um, he likes hollow novels. He likes reading, including Beowulf. And he sleeps wearing an eye mask. Because apparently, that's what they need to mention. That's what's the most important thing about Ensign Kim, folks. He wears an eye mask when he sleeps, and he calls his parents. <laughs> what a good little boy he is. Hey, he had a girlfriend for the longest time. The one from Canada? Why did they make him such a generic character? Yeah. Because, you know what? He wasn't bad. Garrett did a great no. job acting as, uh, acting him, you know? And I think it was really unfair to Garrett and to Ensign Kim. Just overall, how he was treated. And even in action figure form, he still gets the shaft. Yeah, and that that's not cool, man. But he does come with some really cool accessories that I think kind of redeems him a little bit. It No, it doesn't redeem him, but it does redeem the figure. All right, yeah. So first off, the really exciting thing is his stand. No, it's really not, but it does say his name on it, which is nice. So that way you can, you know, not get lost. And as you can see, our, our Ensign Kim is standing up pretty well on his own. So he doesn't really need the base, yeah. but, you know, just as a quick point, he's got the same articulation as all of the Voyager figures did at this point, which was the bicep swivel, shoulders that go up and down, head that moves, waist that turns. He's got the nice V joint, crotch I area. I like that V joint. He is quite stiff out of the box. We've got the thigh swivel because that's how they can actually sit now as opposed to older figures. So, you know, you can get that nice horse stance pose. <laughs> All right, that's our Kim on the base. Arns and Kim comes with a minty green phaser as well as a tricorder. We've seen these before in plenty of toys. And this phaser has the beam coming out of it as well. He also comes with a field kit. Now, we've seen this before, I think, with an O'Brien figure. We've seen this a bunch of times, yeah, actually. They reused yeah. this the Riker, even. That was a gold version. O'Brien had one. A few yeah. other characters have had it. Yeah, I think it's one of the more interesting ones because it just has so much detail to it. Yeah, I've always liked this one. The thing is, though, with this piece in particular is that it's got this little nook here. That was meant to actually hold something. Uh, unfortunately, that does not come with our Ensign Kim, so... Yeah. It doesn't really close. Well, actually, you can does almost it? get it. So if you do some more finagling, you might be able to actually get it in there. If it does fit, then that would be great. No. Mm, nah, it's not quite doing it, but it's so close. Yep. This is the antipolaric armband. It repe repels subspace fractures within three meters. I think that's from one of the first episodes of season one. In fact, I don't know what the name of that one is, but it's like they go to this planet. It's like they're caught in a time thing. It was yeah, very tiny wimey. Well, well, Kes could see them, but they couldn't or something. Yeah, well, well, that one's an antipolaric armband. This here is the polaric generator capable of opening and widening subspace fractures with modifications. This one's actually really cool. I really like this That one is one of the best accessories that I think we've ever seen on any of the figures. And yeah, not only that, it actually moves. Yeah. Like, yeah, the top part moves, the other parts don't, but the yeah. top part actually moves. Like, that's a good accessory. The details to this are just fantastic. So despite the fact that Ensign Kim's figure is not the greatest. His accessories are actually quite yes. good. Well, I don't think one balances out the other. I really do like these accessories, so I think they're a great addition to, you know, the entire wave. And all of the figures, to be honest. I mean, every Playmate figure. This is just awesome. And we never really saw this accessory again either, which is unfortunate, because that's a good one. I wouldn't mind having more than one of those, but mm -hmm. what purpose would it serve? I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, it was specific to Voyager, so. All right, so now let's add our Ensign Harry Kim to our Intrepid Class Bridge set. So overall, final thoughts about Ensign Kim. Uh, well, this figure ain't gonna have a promotion anytime soon. That is so sad. I will say this: rather than getting the tricorder or the phaser, I so would have rather he got um he got a clarinet. Yes, that, that would have been made me so much happier. Why didn't they include a clarinet? That because would have been such a good choice. Everything else. Yeah, clarinet though, man, that actually would have been a great accessory to have. Mm -hmm. That would have made me at least feel a little bit better about the whole face thing. Ensign Kim, you can't even hold your accessories. Jeez. Oh, poor Ensign Kim. 
So that's our look at our Playmates figure of Ensign Kim from the very first Voyager line. It's really the only figure of Ensign Kim in this scale. He would never get another improvement or any kind of other additional figure besides maybe a doll-style toy. So That's eh, a shame. Yeah, he didn't really get a lot of love. He deserves more. Garrett Wang and Harry Kim deserve better. I'm Captain Andrea. I'm Commander Matthew. Thanks for watching this episode of Trek Back Tuesday. And until next time, live long and buy toys.